In this episode of Getting to Know The Schwanz 27, I talk about kids, PC versus console, and cocks and beer. But first, gameplay in the background is some Battlefield Hardline from the beta, and if I run out of footage from that, I'll throw in some Battlefield 4 gameplay as well. Let's get right into the questions, not wasting any time, but if you have a question for me for next time, be sure to leave it down below in the comments section. Ghetto Boy 619 asks, do you have kids? If not, will you be willing to have them? Um, I don't have any kids right now, and as of this moment, I do not want to have any kids. There's several reasons for it, and my wife and I have discussed it on one of our dual comms. Uh, I'll link it down below in the description in case you missed it for the full answer from the both of us. But... I'm not much of a kid person. I never grew up around kids. I never, you know, had to babysit kids when I was a teenager. I never really had any younger cousins. So for me, I was never really acclimated to the whole kids thing. My only real experience with kids was when I was a cashier at a supermarket and the kids would just annoy the fuck fuck out of their parents to get them like candy or whatever it was when they were checking out on the aisle no thank you i do not want a crying screaming kid i don't want to have to deal with that shit now since then my sister has had a kid and she's now like two and a half years old and she is really really good uh the kid i'm talking about so my feelings have, like, changed slightly, but I still would rather not have kids. I would rather enjoy my life and do things for myself. When you have a kid or when you want to have a child, your life changes dramatically from that point forward. You have to put your child first, and for me, I'm not ready for that yet. I would still rather do things like go on vacations, have a social life, you know, play my video games, all of that would change once I would have a kid. So at this moment, no, I wouldn't, but my mind is up for debate. Obviously, I'm married. I don't make the decision on any of that. It's all up to my wife. <laughs> no one cares about KD. We're getting into the gaming questions here. Would you rather play Ghost for the rest of your life or have the ability to play any Call of Duty you wanted, but you have to use a sniper rifle? Um, uh, give me ghosts. <laughs> as sad as that sounds, I think I could have fun with ghosts if I use some of the other guns. To me, I'm not much of a sniper in Call of Duty. It doesn't really feel natural to me, whereas in Battlefield, the sniping mechanics feel natural. Also, if you could create a brand new game mode for Call of Duty, what would it be? I would love to see the Marked for Death game mode from Titanfall be implemented into Call of Duty. For those of you that don't know what it is... There are two different teams, and one player on each team becomes the marked target. Now, if you are the marked target, you get kind of like a VSAT on your minimap, so you know exactly where all of the enemies are. So it would be great to have teamwork to call out where the enemies are. Now, you have to, on your team, have to kill the enemy marked target, and you get a point. First one to ten points wins. I think that that game mode would be awesome for Call of Duty. Especially now that they brought back war in the game type Momentum in Advanced Warfare. Caden A. asks, Do you think Call of Duty will ever have dedicated servers? Upcoming Treyarch and Infinity Ward games might have that. I'm talking full dedicated servers, not hybrid BS. Um... Personally, I don't think so, just like you said here in your question. I think that Activision already makes enough money off of not having to invest in dedicated servers in Call of Duty in order to pull that off. However, uh, you know, their sales have been down a lot, and I'm not sure if that's because of the quality of the product is lower or because people are not enjoying their online experience because there aren't any dedicated servers now dedicated servers will make the game fundamentally better however since the player base of Call of Duty is so diverse and vast, there are people out there that have absolute garbage internet connection. And you can't help those players no matter what. If they're going to have shitty connections to a peer-to-peer -peer host, they're going to have shitty connections to a dedicated server. So just keep that in mind. I think that Call of Duty should implement an internet restriction limit. Like, say, if you don't have at least two up and two down and, like, a you know, 20 MS ping to the nearest server, you can't play the game. I think that that would be better than having dedicated servers themselves. But then that would alienate some of their customer base so they'd lose sales. So it's kind of a catch-22 there. 
Chris Gome, what is your favorite Call of Duty in Battlefield? My favorite Call of Duty is Modern Warfare 2, and my favorite Battlefield game is Battlefield 4. But, um, the only other Battlefield games I've played are on the Xbox 360, Battlefield Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. So, those aren't the real games. They're like the neutered version of the game from the PC. So, I haven't really experienced true Battlefield other than Battlefield 4 and the beta for Hardline. And so far, I still enjoy Battlefield 4 better, but that may change as things go on. And, if you could only play Call of Duty or Battlefield, which one would you choose? Uh, I'd play Battlefield all day over Call of Duty. There is just so much more to do in Battlefield. It's more of a sandbox type FPS than Call of Duty, which is just run around and kill people. So, that's why I'd rather play Battlefield if I had only one game to play ever, because I wouldn't get bored of it. It wouldn't become stale to me. Apex, would you rather play COD Ghosts on Black Ops 2 maps or Black Ops 2 on COD Ghosts maps? Uh, this one's fucking easy. I'd rather play COD Ghosts on Black Ops 2 maps. To me, Black Ops 2 didn't function properly. There was problems with hit detection, player models, camera angles. There was a lot of gameplay mechanics issues, and I think it was because it was the last game for the last gen console. I think that that really held that game back in terms of getting the uh, gameplay performance out of it that it absolutely needed. But the only problem to me with Call of Duty Ghosts were the fucking maps. I mean, a lot of the guns are, you know, one-shot kill or two-shot kills because they eliminated that uh, hit scan bug with the first couple of bullets, so people would get dropped instantly. But on Black Ops 2 maps, Call of Duty Ghosts weapons and balancing and things like that would work much, much better. And, part two, are there any maps from Call of Duty World at War you would bring into Advanced Warfare? I personally would bring Upheaval. Upheaval is one of my favorite maps in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, and I think it would work pretty well, because there are several buildings on that map that one could get on top of and scale into. So I think, personally, that Upheaval is probably the perfect map from uh, World at War to bring into Advanced Warfare. Retromoddingmer102. If you had to play either Call of Duty 4, World at War, or Modern Warfare 2 for 24 hours straight, which would it be? Me, personally, would be World at War. Even though the hackers would drive me crazy, it would still be the most fun. Call of Duty 4 can get stale, I agree, but so can also World at War. And the reason why is because there isn't as much variety and you don't have customizable kill streaks to go for different things in different game modes. That's why I think Modern Warfare 2 would be the game that I would play for 24 hours straight because there would be more variety in things that I would want to do. There's more guns, there's more kill streaks. There's better maps, in my opinion, than those two other games. So for me, it's got to be MW2, in spite of the fact that shit scoping and noob tubing would be much, much prevalent. OP Beta with another two part question. God, what's with all the fucking two part questions now? Who would win in a race, in your opinion? Sonic the Flash or Roadrunner? Um. I would have to go here with The Flash, because I was never really a Sega guy, I mostly played Nintendo games, so that strikes out Sonic, and Roadrunner, meet meet. actually Roadrunner is the name of the Time Warner Cable high speed internet service, and I fucking hate Time Warner Cable, so that's why I'm gonna go with The Flash here. Uh, kind of a stupid way in order to narrow it down, but fuck you, you asked me the question, I'm gonna give you the answer. Number two, favorite PlayStation exclusive game franchise mine is Spyro. Um, I never had a PlayStation when I was growing up. I was always a Nintendo guy until Xbox 360, and then I bought an Xbox. Um, I had Nintendo 64, GameCube, SNES, all the way down the line. But I did have some friends that did have a PlayStation. And every time we went over to their house, we would always play Twisted Metal games. And I know that there are some Twisted Metal games for the PC, but it is on console a PlayStation exclusive game franchise. So I would have to go with Twisted Metal. For those of you that don't know what that game is, it's basically like a car battle arena type of game. Think of battle mode in Mario Kart, but with actual cars and different abilities for each car to have along with battle pickups along the way fun as fuck fun for hours the sergeant j here gives a fucking paragraph 
You've sampled the PC Master Race with the Lag Comp crew and friends. We'll be seeing the Schwanz with an upgraded rig in the future. Uh, honestly, for my PC, the only thing I'd need to upgrade is my processor. Right now, I have a single-core i3, but it can be overclocked to 3.3 gigahertz, which allows me to play most free-to-play PC games on, like, you know, low or medium settings. But if I upgrade just that processor, I have a decent enough graphics card. It's an... AMD Radeon 7450. I have a decent enough graphics card along with two different monitors that I could pretty much run a lot of games on, you know, lower medium settings. But the processor and my CPU can't handle it. So it's like a $250 or $200 upgrade to a quad core processor. So maybe I'll sink some money into that. More of his paragraph here. After all, gaming with friends is such a fucking chore on the shitty Xbox One. Or will you stay with the VCR till it gets Hulk smashed? Or trade it in for a PS4 instead? I'm going to stay with the Xbox One because console gaming actually allows me to be not inept, totally inept at gaming. <laughs> If you guys have seen my PC Noob Struggle series, the transition from controller to keyboard and mouse is not very smooth for me. And I think it's because I never played any games on the PC aside from Command & Conquer Red Alert, which doesn't really require that much mobility, if you will. Whereas on console, I have been playing console for like 25 plus years. So I've had so much time and practice. Even though these generation of consoles is fucking terrible, I'm going to stick out with the Xbox One. However, I'm still going to mix in my PC gaming here and there um, because I do enjoy some of the games on PC and I enjoy playing with some of my PC friends. I'm not going to trade it in for a PS4 because most of the people that I game with on a regular basis have an Xbox One. So even if I got the quote-unquote better console, uh, I would be playing by my motherfucking self, all right? And uh, I'm not, you know, any Billy Idol dancing with myself. Uh, 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 oh, that is a terrible rendition of that song. Holy shit. Gyrome124 basically asked the same thing. Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, or PC with Gaben, our lord and savior. Uh, I already told you I'm going to stick with the Xbox One because I also do YouTube. Uh, I want to post up some decent gameplays every once in a while. It's going to be a long, long road before I get some decent gameplays on PC. So that's why I'm going to also play on the console because... I do much better on the console than I do on the PC. But I'm also still going to bring you the PC Noob Struggle series that I know you guys like. Nodi88 asks, how come you never come and play CSGO with me, dickhead? Well, that's because I don't play CSGO. CSGO plays me. <laughs> CSGO is an extremely difficult game, and it's very demoralizing. But I'll come and play with you, Nodi. The problem is, you live in British Columbia, Canada, which is all the way on the West Coast, and I live on the East Coast, so we got some time zone differences to work out, but don't worry, baby, I got you. Lord Platts asks, Have you ever had second thoughts about gaming, and if it's really the community you want to associate yourself with? Given the fact that 90% of it is age, true, and given the fact that most people out of the loop have no clue about the depth of gaming as a hobby slash career. Uh, for me, uh, gaming, the community aspect of it, yes, there's a lot of toxicity and negativity around the community. However, I pick and choose the people that I associate myself with and I interact with. And if I don't really like you that much, then chances are I probably won't interact with you that much. You know, a passing here or there. So when you get to pick and choose who you get to game with and who you get to hang around with, the AIDS part of the community kind of goes away. I mean, every once in a while, you'll get a, into a comment war with a dumb shit about something that you know something about and they fucking obviously don't. But... For the most part, the people that I have met through my YouTube channel and through gaming have all been really good people, and I'm glad to call them my friends, even though I've never really met any of them before. So, the community aspect of it, you can do it in a macrochasm, which is the entire community, or what I like to do is microcosm it up. That's like a new verb, right? I'm going to microcosm that shit up. Um... You know, and just say that the circle of people that I interact with are good people and I enjoy interacting with them. Moldy Butt, please, is going to ask, Schwantz, how many times have you thrown your gamepad? Uh, a lot. I've thrown my controller a lot. 
um, and how many of them have broke from the spikes. Now, I've never broken an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. You heard me correctly, never broken them. And you know why? Because I throw the controller into the couch over on the side of my room. So it's got a soft landing spot. These things cost 50 fucking dollars. I'm not going to just break them because I get mad. Now, some of you might say, but you did break your coffee table, asshole. Well, my coffee table only costs 10 bucks. So you do the math. If I'm going to break something, I'm going to break the coffee table. It only costs me $10. Now, back in the day with Nintendo 64, I broke a lot of those controllers, believe me. Playing GoldenEye in Perfect Dark, I broke a lot of those motherfuckers. Finally, we're done with the gaming stuff. Damon asks, would you rather sit on a cock or drink a beer or drink a cock and sit on a beer? Uh, this one's pretty easy to me and let me break it down for you. The first option, sitting on a cock and drinking a beer, I am doing one thing I really don't like, sitting on a cock. Whereas in the second half of that sentence, drink a cock and sit on a beer, I wouldn't want to do either one of those things. So at least if I'm sitting on a cock and drinking a beer, I'm at least doing one thing that I enjoy, even though sitting on a cock would probably not be preferential. Sitting on a beer is also just as bad, in my opinion, and drinking a cock is something I never, ever, ever want to do. So I'm going to go with the first half of that question, you sick fuck. Dask Lean Guitar gives me two questions. Number one, do you like seafood? Of course, motherfucker. I see food and I eat it. <laughs> Actually, I do like seafood. I like sushi. Uh, I especially like it when it's in a spicy roll with that spicy mayo. I like salmon. I like shrimp. Some things I do not like, however, are mussels. I'm not a huge fan of that. Lobster, not a huge fan of. Crab is meh. So uh, seafood's kind of a 50-50 split for me. My dad, growing up, never liked any seafood. So the only thing we really had were fish sticks. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Fish sticks, Kanye West. Um, so, <laughs> so... I was never really into seafood until I got a little bit older, a little bit wiser. There's another shitty singing job. Uh, nextly, how long have I been playing guitar? I started playing guitar in my junior year of college. So that was in the year 2005. It's now 2015. So I've been playing for about 10 years or so. Why aim gaming? As a guitar player, I always like to know these things. What type and how many guitars, amps, and effects do you own slash use? Thanks. Um, so let's start off with guitars. I have three different guitars. I have a Jackson Soloist SLS MG with a Eerie Desk paint job. This thing is a fucking beast. I got this on sale at Guitar Center for $800. It was originally about two grand. And the guy was like, I just want to get rid of this thing because the paint job is so ugly. Are you fucking kidding me? Look at this paint job. It's amazing. It's purple and blue and green. Uh, the next guitar that I have is a practice guitar that I use for, like, carrying around every once in a while. It is a Ibanez Gax FX. It's basically like a Gibson SG knockoff, and it's red, as you can see here. And lastly, I have a Fender acoustic guitar that I got from my wife as an engagement present with a custom inscription on the back. So, Fender acoustic, I love this thing. Amps. I have two different amps. I have a PV practice amp. It's a pretty small amp. It's probably like, you know, 10 inches by 10 inches. And then I have a custom with a K uh, cabinet, which has got four 12 inch speakers in it and a custom head. Uh, I forget the model number, but if I remember it, I'll leave it down in the uh, description or the comment section below. And what effects do I use? I have a multi-effects pedal. It's a Digitech GFX1 multi-effects pedal. So it's got fucking everything. It's got a wah, it's got chorus, it's got flange, it's got all the fucking shit that you want. It's got fade, it's got echo, it's got everything in it. And you could program it so you could make your own guitar effects if you want to. And that's really all I need. I don't have anything else other than that because I play, you know, hard rock music. So most of the time, I'm playing with the distortion on anyway. Chaos Lord David, two-parter. One, who were your favorite musicians were as if they're dead now? 
Um, I really like Metallica and Megadeth, so most of the guys from that, uh, James Hetfield, Dave Mustaine, those are guitar players that I like. Uh, John Schaefer from Iced Earth is probably the best rhythm guitar player of all time. Um, there is Jeff Waters from Annihilator is a really, really good guitar player. Um, there's a lot of them. There's so many of them, in fact, that they're, they're just too many to list. But off the top of my head, those are my guys. And two, who inspired me to pick up a guitar? Um, other than musician-wise, um, it was my college buddies that inspired me to pick up a guitar. I actually started playing on the guitar of this girl that lived across the hallway from us uh, sophomore year of college. So I actually started in sophomore year, but I didn't really get into it until junior year. That's when I bought my own guitar, etc., etc. But I started playing on her guitar, and then some of the other guys that I lived with had also played guitar, and they helped me out to try and you know, teach me how to read tabs, how to read chord charts, how to read music, things like that. So those guys were my inspiration to pick up guitar, especially because some of them were already in a band as well. The BT Bomber asks, who was your favorite wrestler and what was your favorite wrestling company, WWE, WCW, or ECW, and any stories? Wow. Okay. I don't know what the any stories part was, but I guess I will go along with uh, just a story about wrestling in general. So, my favorite wrestler, Bret the Hitman Hart. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. He is my favorite wrestler of all time. Now, that's going a ways back for some of you people. So... I actually stopped watching wrestling when, you know, WWE, as it is now, and WCW merged and ECW folded. But my favorite company was WCW at the time. I always liked it better than the WWF. And ECW was one of those novelty things where the wrestling was never really all that great. I mean, there were some really great wrestlers in it. But, you know, the fact that it was hardcore and gruesome was the big you know, catch. Whereas with WCW, I really liked how they introduced a lot of luchadors into the wrestling scene. And for me, their focus was always more on the wrestling than on the storylines themselves. So that's why I like WCW the best. Any stories? Well, I once went over to a friend of a friend's house for a pay-per-view event. Now, this friend had already told me, look, this guy whose house we're going over to, he is a hardcore wrestling guy, all right? He doesn't like any of the fan favorite names and shit like that. He doesn't like any of those people, so... You know, when he asks who's your favorite wrestler, you know, don't say, you know, a shitty guy who's just, you know, a fan favorite. I'm like, all right, fine, fine. So before the event was going on, we were horsing around wrestling and I had on some Stone Cold Steve Austin boxers. Now, I eventually got like my shirt lifted up and since my boxers were above my pants... The guy whose house we went to saw that I had Stone Cold Steve Austin boxers and he asks me, do you like Stone Cold Steve Austin? And I'm like, uh, uh, I kind of like froze at that moment because I didn't know what to say because I knew that Stone Cold Steve Austin is a terrible wrestler, but he's one of those fan favorite type of guys. So basically I was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place here. I'm wearing Stone Cold Steve Austin boxers, but he's asking me if I like the dude or not. So then finally he breaks down and he's like, actually I've kind of turned on him a little bit. He's been able to take, you know, some bumps. For those of you who are not in the wrestling term, that means somebody who could make a fall act natural. You know, there's a lot of people who can't take bumps and that's why they're not as good of wrestlers. Like for example, Hulk Hogan was never really a great wrestler, even though he was very, very popular. He could never really sell a move or make, you know, a... a a move make it look like it hurt that much but anyway i digress so he was like yeah i don't really mind stone cold steve austin that much anymore and that was a huge relief for me because i was like scared fucking shitless of this guy who was older than me by the way and i didn't want to look not cool in front of my friends Jay Sugar zero one another two parter sports questions. Do you think Eli Manning is washed? Um, I still think he put up good numbers last season, despite the fact that the Giants themselves did not do so great. I blame it more on the defense rather than the offense of the Giants. However, Eli Manning has gotten into a rut or a routine of the type of offense that he likes to use, and it's kind of ham-fisted the Giants a little bit. If Eli Manning doesn't want to learn another offense, it's going to be 
be tough when they're going to want to look for a new coach. They might have to settle for whoever, you know, is the assistant coach right now of the Giants to take over as the head coach because they're not going to want to change the offense around. Do I think David Wright is washed? I don't think he's washed. He's still a relatively young athlete. However, with the new stadium, I don't think he's going to put up the numbers that he used to do. And a lot of people have high expectations of the Mets this season. I just don't see it. I think there's way too many fucking question marks with the Mets in order to do well. Now, there are not as many question marks as the New York Yankees. However, there's things like, will Kevin Long actually help out Curtis Granderson? Can David Wright have a bounce back year? What about Matt Harvey? How is he going to do coming off of surgery? Plus, there's other questions in the rotation like DeGrom. The next time around the league, are these guys going to be able to figure him out? He had a great season last year, but... He didn't pitch to guys more than like, you know, two starts. So people are going to be watching film on him and are going to pick up his tendencies and things that he does. So I don't think David Wright is washed. However, I don't think he'll hit 25 home runs and knock in 90 RBIs this year. I think that that is probably the precipice that you'll get from him. And last but not least, Nasty Habit asks, is there a question you have always wanted someone to ask you but haven't? And if yes or no, what would it be? Um, I don't think anybody has asked me like a home run question that I haven't answered. I mean, this is episode number 30 fucking five of this shit. I've answered a boatload of questions. Um, I don't think there is a question that I have not answered yet that I've wanted somebody to ask me about. But I will tell you that I enjoy more of the personal type questions versus the gaming type of questions. Most of the gaming type of questions are pretty, you know, straightforward, self-explanatory, or these weird kind of would-you-rather type questions that, you know, have been going on in this episode, which... Uh, I mean, they're, they're whatever. They're hypothetical questions that really don't give that much insight versus, you know, like a life story that I could impart some wisdom on. Um, so those are the type of questions I'd rather be asked. But hey, this series is for you, motherfuckers. So you can ask me whatever you want in the comments section down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Getting to Know The Schwantz 27. Out like three strikes at a baseball game. Until next time.